Ruluf, welcome to the Sports Editor. Great to chat to you. I think it's been it's been a while, but it's been so good to be able to chat to you because I think you've you've got so much experience, and we could talk about your career for actually I think like a whole week because you've done so many things, you've achieved so much in the game of cricket. So it's it's absolutely brilliant. Thanks for your time. And I want to start with the nickname, the Bulldog, but I think some people have also said Pug. I'm not too sure where Pug comes from. Um, but you, <laughs> you, you, you played with, I would say, with a natural aggression, but I think it's more of a, a drive. You're very passionate about the game. Um, and that just is sort of something that came naturally to you, didn't it? Yeah, I think um, from, from a young age, I've always been a highly competitive person. Mm. Um, obviously, my dad and the way he played was also very competitive with, it, with every, everything he did. So, uh, yeah, uh, Chris van Nuertweg, I don't know if you remember Basie. He actually mm-hmm. gave me that, uh, okay. when I was playing for the Titans, he gave me that right. nickname, the Bulldog, uh, because of the way I played and mm-hmm. competed. So, yeah, it sort of just stuck and uh, there it is. But, yeah, Pug, I'm not too sure about that one. <laughs> uh, so we could maybe discuss it at another time. Uh, but your career was interesting because you started off, you know, making an on the 19th side and you were actually a wicketkeeper, um, a very important position, I believe. But then why sort of change... Well, I think it's been a good change. Obviously, left arm orthodox and middle order batsman. Why did you sort of leave the keeping area? I think after, obviously, on the 19s, um, went overseas a couple of years and then I played for high school old boys in Pretoria with uh, Heine Kun. Um, Heine was actually the leggy and I was the keeper. Um, and then I think one game they needed somebody to just bowl a bit of death. Um, so I bowled around in the nets a bit and hit a few Yorkers and they're like, okay, well, we needed to bowl an over. Um, and Heine actually took the gloves then and bowled a decent over. Heine took unbelievable down leg stumping and yeah, we never switched back. He took the gloves and I started bowling and you know, that's the end of that. So yeah, both of us made made the switch switch that day basically and uh, yeah, it's worked out all right. No, that's brilliant. But do you ever sort of give some work or advice on the keeping ability at all or are you just focus purely on all round side of things now yeah no i'm more mm-hmm. all around i've uh, i've picked up the gloves a few times just fool around and practice again <laughs> and uh oh, you never know eh? there's always injuries could happen and uh mm-hmm. yeah i'd love to take the gloves for a few overs again but uh yeah being in the field is uh something that i love and uh i don't think i would have been able to keep for much longer anyhow <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, you you just skills probably the root of brilliant to see. But you've done something that not many people have done in the game of cricket. Um, I think there's only about 12 in history have actually ended up playing for two different countries from ODI perspective, and I think five in T20 internationals. You know, first of all, playing for South Africa must have been a dream come true, especially growing up. Um, was it, do you feel, necessary experience for you to get your career going, to be able to play for South Africa? Yeah, I think, you know, every every youngster that picks up the bat and ball, you know, wants to play for South Africa. And, uh, you know, when I started the game and watching the game, you know, guys like John T. Rhodes, I mean, I absolutely, I like John T. and just want to be like him all the time. And, uh, you know, just to make my debut and play for South Africa was absolute, you know, reaching reach, reaching the top for me, you know, representing my country was uh, an absolute honour and privilege. And, you know, it's uh, something I'll cherish forever. Ah, brilliant. But I think it's also been a good experience for you in terms of being able to play for the Netherlands because I think you added a lot of value to the side there. You got to experience a T20 World Cup and I think there was a lot of hunger and desire in that squad which I think you could also add to. So it almost sort of worked out nicely in the sense that you got to play for them but they benefited from you as well. Sort of a nice mix there, a nice relationship that I think formed there. Yeah, I think, you know, obviously coming up to the, into the Netherlands setup, I did have a bit of experience behind me and uh, I played a bit of cricket. But, uh, you know, Dutch cricket is uh, still developing. Um, we are on the up. Um, and it's always nice to operate in those environments. You know, I think guys are hungry to learn. And, uh, you know, they play, play with unbelievable passion for the game and determination. So it was easy fitting into that uh, environment coming from a, as you say, a full member South mm-hmm. African team. Um, so, yeah, it's, it was really nice coming into that environment and, you know, being able to contribute. And Rolf, are, are you still putting your hand up for international selection with the Netherlands? That's still your, your objective, your goal, still to play, represent the country? No, oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. No, I'm, uh, as much as I'm available, I will, 
I'll put my hand up. Um, I love playing for Holland. It's mm. uh, something I really enjoyed over the last couple of years. And yeah, there's still still two, 20, two T20 World Cups in the next couple of years and then the 50 over cup. Um, so hopefully I can uh, stay fit and, and uh, be up for selection. Absolutely. But just could you fill us in a bit, you know, because there's been so much talk of the 2020 World Cup, you know, one stage in Australia, you know, is it still going ahead? Have the dates changed? What exactly is, is the outcome of the 2020 World Cup? Um, as far as I know, it's still in October in India this year. Right. Um, and then next year, I think October in Australia. Oh, okay. um, the original one was supposed to be now in October in Australia, but they've, they've switched those two around. Um, yes, yeah, as far as I know, it's still happening. Hopefully by that time, COVID is uh, out the window and we can uh, just get back to a sort of normal and enjoy playing cricket in front of crowds again and you know, enjoy these tournaments. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, it'll be good. It'll be good to get it up and running again. But, but G20 cricket's been, I would say, your, your playground. You've, I think, featured in virtually every single league in the world, which is absolutely brilliant. It must be hard to pick your favourite tournament because there's so many good ones. Um, but do you think 2020 crickets changed crickets, generally speaking? Um, I, I think if you if you look at change in cricket, you've got to probably then, looking at T20, you've got to look at the longer format. You've got to look at the red ball, how that's changed, the purest form of the game. Um, mm. In my opinion, I think it has. Um, obviously, the rates are, are a, lot, a lot higher in test cricket now, the scoring rates. Um, Guys, defensive games isn't as as good as it used to be. Um, I think there's a lot of emphasis on attacking, and you know, guys want to play in T20 T20 tournaments, and because you know, end of the day, that's that's where the where the money is for them. So, I think there is a bit of maybe a neglect of of, of red ball skills um, because of T20 cricket. Um, but I think it's 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 good, still good for the game. You know, T20 cricket, it's broadening. The game in the world and even if you look at t10 cricket at the moment yeah. there's a lot more countries being able to not just compete but set up t10 10, 10 leagues and end of the day that's what we want for cricket you want everybody to play it and, and grow the game absolutely you know because from one perspective i'm going to jump on the red ball cricket just now from one perspective 2020 cricket is absolutely some guys pure game they're absolutely thriving at that so that could be the positive side of it that some guys really feel I'm a Macruvia. Yes, I want to play 2020 cricket actually all year round because if you schedule properly, you could play in every league throughout the year and play cricket the whole year. Do you think that's also something that guys focus on? No, definitely. I think I think there's more and more youngsters looking at T20 cricket and mm. and, and say, seeing that as their route in. You know, um, so I think there will be a lot more emphasis in the the grassroots level of the game. Right. On T20 focus in terms of, well, you can say shot selections, the reverse sweeps and the laps and yeah. every little kid's, kid is watching Josh Butler playing right. laps and A.B. and those boys. So they want to imitate that and that's where it's going to push. Um, kids are going to want to be like their heroes. So. Absolutely. So how long did it take you to master the switch hit then? <laughs> uh, I'm still trying. <laughs> 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 no, it's, uh, it's just something, you know, you fool around in the nets with it and, you know, you just build up confidence with it and then you start playing it in games and it comes off once or twice and it becomes part of your armory. So, you know, it's just, just playing around with it and, uh, and then experimenting. Yeah, and talking about that, you know, we talk about A.V. De Villiers, Mr. 360. Do you think he was almost responsible for basically playing almost any shots around the ground before, you know, just playing traditional, keep it nice and tidy. He's also revolutionized cricket in that regard, don't you think, in terms of his shot selection? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, even if you go go further back, if you look at uh, uh, Dolshan, uh, Ryan Campbell with the scoop, um, you know, those boys started off and, you know, mm. I think more of the traditionally correct batters, like, let's say, A.B., started a... Uh, uh, tapping into those skills and, you know, how good they are, it just makes it so much harder to bowl at them. So, mm. I think more and more players will look into that. No, excellent, excellent. But let's, let's touch on, on Test Cricket very quickly. Um, and going back to Netherlands, I know it, it's, it's quite a, an effort and it's a lot of work to 
be able to play test cricket. Um, is there a bit of work that they're sort of doing on that? Are they aiming to obviously get, the, get that test sort of re reputation? Or are they going to be focusing more on ODR in 2020 cricket? I think at the moment, from my perspective, Ireland is obviously still a developing nation yeah. in terms of cricket. Um, so I think getting getting kids to play, it's going to have to be white ball cricket, and right. you know, just growing the game in the Netherlands. I think that's the most important thing at the moment. So I would say Test cricket is shouldn't be a priority. Um, mm. I don't think we're at that stage yet where we can not just compete, but have a, a proper structure to feed feed a being a Test na a playing nation. Um, so no, I would say T20 will be still be the focus. Um, you know, the more we start playing in those more consistently, uh, you can start looking to develop your game a bit more and uh, look, really look at the structure of how we want to do things in the Netherlands. Mm, absolutely. Well, it's, it's nice that more and more people are talking about the Netherlands and how they're making progress. So you're obviously doing something right. So yeah, keep at it, keep going. It's good to see. Really, really good to see. But then there's been some very interesting uh, test crickets that's happened recently. Um, I know it's maybe a bit long gone, but India and England was a very interesting test. Two days of cricket. Um, how do you feel, Rolf? Does that bode well for test cricket? Or is it just the nature of the beast? Is it, it just happens? What do you think? Well, if, if I look at the England-India series, for instance, um, you know, if, Eng if India would come here and it's nipping all over the place, you know, there won't be as many frowns. But now they go to India and it's turning from from the first session. Um, I'm, in a way, I'm, I'm happy with that. Because um, it is home advantage. It is, uh, you know, it's got to be to their to their advantage. Yeah. And, uh, I think England could have probably just played it better. Um, but it'll be good to see now the return series when India come to England and how they handle the seaming and swinging ball. Um, it's, it's end of the day, that's, that's the test. That's, that's what makes test cricket so good. It's uh, mm -hmm. being able to pers persist with those uh, skills. Yeah, absolutely. Because there was a few guys commentating saying, well, like you just said earlier, you've got to bat properly. And that's so essential with test cricket. I mean, you can't bat properly. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Um, do you feel that also was perhaps almost um, an... an England underestimated how difficult it was going to be, but they just didn't apply themselves well enough with batting. I think England did think it's going to turn, it's going to be tough. They're going to face a lot of overs of spin, but I don't they, they didn't predict that it's going to turn so much so mm -hmm. early. Um, but I think, you know, looking on the flip side, India batted well. They, they, they made some big runs in the series. Um, mm -hmm. So it's, it's hard to point your finger on, on the pitch and say, oh, it's below average. Uh, I just think that England could have played it better. And yeah, but as I said, it'll be interesting to see how, how, how in India face it when they come to England now. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be, it's going to be soon. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> but Rudolf, you, you um, I think touched down in about 2016 there in, in Somerset, played county kind of cricket. Absolutely brilliant. And you had a great season. You think you took about 22 wickets in the Red Bull uh, League and then T20 Batson of the season. So really good start. And do you feel that that's where you sort of made your mark? Your first season was a brilliant one and you've just grown from there. Yeah, obviously I, I played for Somerset in 2011. So, yeah, sorry, yeah. you know, I was, I was going into an environment where I've, I've known mm. guys from before. So, you know, that makes it a lot easier. It's not just a, a clean slate and you know, you've got to sort of impress guys from the start again. So I walked into an environment where they welcomed me and, uh, you know, that always makes it a lot easier. You know, I mean, it's a big move for me, you know, bringing the whole family over to the UK. So no, it's, uh, it was very putting my mind at ease coming to Somerset and the way they've uh, welcomed me. Yeah, but I think it, it suits your character because it's, it's a jolly competitive uh, league. But it's something that you feel is obviously very necessary for you because you enjoy being, I would say, pushed in the right direction. You want to get better at what you do. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, um, obviously being seen as a predominantly white ball player, uh, coming to, to Somerset and being involved in the Red Bull stuff. You know, I love playing Red Bull cricket, even though I haven't played it that much. Um, I still think it's, it's an awesome, awesome uh, format. 
Um, but yeah, no, it's you want to improve all the time, and there's always youngsters coming up wanting to take your place. And you know, at the end of the day, that's that's the, the healthy environment that you need to create. Uh, you know, guys pushing for places and and putting other guys under pressure. Absolutely, absolutely. And just on that, you know, from from when you started to where the league is now. Have you seen quite a big improvement in the league itself? Are the guys just getting better? Is the, you know, are the guys sort of fine tuning their skills every single season and it's just getting better and better and better cricket? Yeah, I think obviously, you know, we always talk about it, but technology and analysis and mm. all those little, little things adding to the game now, it's, you know, those one percenters, there's a lot more one percenters now. It's not just a few few facets of the game or a certain guys game you know guys batsmen are expanding their games bowlers are coming up with far more variant uh, deliveries so it's you know it's it's interesting but it's uh, it's the way the game's going you know those one percenters are getting more and more important uh, in that competitive edge absolutely absolutely but you happily say that's probably the best league in the world to play in, in terms of red ball cricket Absolutely brilliant. I know Australia are doing their bit to make it, it work, um, but it has to be so. If you've got you know, enough international players playing in there, your setup for your country is going to be really, really good. Yeah, definitely. I think um, obviously uh, England's got 18 teams, um, <laughs> make, it's, it's quite a lot of players, you know, sure. but it's, it's taking into consideration the amount of players is still a very good, good standard. I know Australia is a uh, is uh, another one that's uh, big on 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 state cricket and the four day mm-hmm. stuff. You know they got their internationals playing all the time, which is uh, you know, it's what you need because obviously not just they getting better, but the guys pushing up is experiencing better players and feeling a more more pressure that will be closer to to test level. And that's ideally that's what you want. Mm, absolutely, but Rudolf, you you've done well, like I mentioned, and you you've been awarded with a, a county cap. What exactly is a county cap? So, uh, a county cap gets um, presented to a player which over the years has, I would say, just done the odds, if, if that makes sense. Um, <laughs> so, at the moment, it's still very a red ball based um, cap and number system, which uh, I, I personally think should be also including white ball, ball cricket. Okay. Um, but yeah, you know, some counties are changing and looking at different ways of uh, awarding the cap now. So it's uh, but it's just, just service to the club and uh, you know they, your efforts at the club. I think that's probably what they they, they base it on. No, oh, very very interesting, very very good. And um, you know you seem to be an absolute I won't say jack in the box when it comes to fielding. Is that a right sort of words to use? <laughs> An absolute jack in the box. You, you're very good. You're jumping around. Fielding's obviously something that you pride yourself on. Oh, definitely. I mean, as I said earlier, you know, growing up watching John T. Rhodes, mm. I mean, I, a lot of the times I didn't want to bat and bowl. I just wanted to field and dive around and, and you know, be like John T. So, uh, you know, that's something from a young age that I've really enjoyed doing. Mm. Uh, I think that's also made it easier for me to train it and, uh, you know, being being switched on the field, just you know, it's a habit that I delivered, uh, de- developed early. Yeah, I really feel I agree with you. I feel coaching. I mean, fielding is absolutely essential part of coaching, especially when young guys um, are starting to play the game. Absolutely, absolutely essential. But added to that, rule so obviously you've spoken about you know your all round ability. You're a jolly good fielder. You just seem to add a really good team dynamic to the squad. And I just think that they rely upon you to get them through tough situations. I'm allowed to say that as well, where you're just a guy they rely upon to. <laughs> so, well, maybe. <laughs> you just got that grip, man. You can get them through tough situations. Is that also sort of part of your, your makeup, I'd say? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big believer in, in team, uh, winning games for the team, you know, from any situation and you know, whatever the team needs. Um, I think that's something I keep at the forefront when I play. Um, and I think that helps. I think mm-hmm. I want to be in those situations most of the time, or all the time. Um, but yeah, I think you, you you must want those situations to be successful at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I won't say I'm the 
the best finisher with a bat or the best death bowler in the world. But I enjoy being in those situations. And I think if you believe you can do it, you're going to do it more than you're not. So, you know, whether you think you can or can't, you're probably right. So. <laughs> and if you could just talk to us, you know, like the season starting on the 8th of April, obviously Somerset's very ambitious. They want to do well. Um, are they really trying to aim at for a successful season? But what would you consider a successful season? coming up with the Red Bull Cricket, for you, what would be a successful season? Uh, well, if we, if we can win the county championship, I think that'll be... Yeah. That'll, that'll tick a box. Even if I don't play a game, I'll be over the moon. Um, yeah, no, the boys are working really hard mm. and we're working towards that. I think we've, uh, we've found a method over the last three, four years to compete in the Red Bull competition. Um, and it's just now refining that, that method and throwing one or two more ingredients in and just getting the exact right mix to, to win it. Um, I think we're not far off. Uh, we showed uh, <clears throat> over the last three, four years that we know how to compete. We know how to win games. So, yeah, it's just uh, staying focused and uh, taking every game one step at a time. Yeah, and I, well, I want to wish you well for it, Rudolf. I trust you guys uh, have a great season. I'm sure everything will, will go to plan, let's hope. Um, but yeah, man, all the best in that regard. But there's also a competition that we sort of hear a bit about and maybe we don't know exactly all about it, but it's, it's the 100 ball competition. It's obviously literally 100 balls, am I right? Uh, could you give us a bit of a breakdown? How exactly does it work? What's, it was meant to start a few years ago, but wasn't it? But then obviously with everything, it's... Hasn't really taken off yeah. yet. Now. So it's, yeah, it's basically 100 balls. Um, you have five or 10, 10 ball overs. So it's, it's just a, a bit of a change from the T20 game. So it's just something oh. a little bit different. Um, they're looking to attract new, a new audience to the game. Um, obviously, it's, it's being aired on BBC. So, you know, the, the whole nation can watch it. So it's just trying to attract new, new energy to the game, new faces, you know, new groups um, and I think it's a great idea uh, mm. it's going to be interesting to see how the first season goes and and how the tactics unfold you know with <laughs> guys bowling 10 ball overs could be yeah. interesting and the, you know, it'll be it's exciting I mean you're going to have some of the best best players in the country and players from all over the world coming so it'll be an absolute spectacle Gee whiz so it seems like you've got quite a, a busy season coming up I think Rudolf yeah, it's, it's going to be good but that's that's why I think cricket is doing so well, because it's diversity, I would say. Um, but just remind us, when is that meant to be t- kicking off? Well, I think the 100 starts July, August. Okay, so you still got some yeah, time so. to prepare and work on your switch yet, which is very good. 100%. <laughs> well, enough, it's, it's been really, really interesting chatting to you. I think you've got a lot of depth and a lot of um, passion for the game, which I think more people can feed off from from you so it'll be it must be awesome having you in the change room there because i think you've got lots of good advice you can give and you have some interesting situations but it's been really really great to chat to you thank you so much we love yes, no, thanks ryan really enjoyed it i have quality but yeah thanks for the chat man. no thank you for your time Rulof. thank you for being so good to me i appreciate it no worries you look after have a good one you. Come on, dude. <laughs>